Okay, let's have a look at uh, nucleophilic addition elimination reactions and in particular the mechanisms. We can study the reaction of acid chlorides to illustrate these nucleophilic addition elimination reactions, but you will need to know the following functional groups before you start. So the first group we're looking at is the acid chloride, which has the carbonyl group next to the carbon chlorine group. Uh, these ending names are anoyl chloride, so for example with two carbons in it would be ethanoyl chloride. Next I have a look at carboxylic acids, again the ending for those is anoic acid, so you have ethanoic acid, propanoic acid, etc. We then have to look at esters, and the names are like methyl ethanoate, propyl ethanoate. The first part of the ester's name comes from the alcohol that it's made from. The second part of the name comes from the acid chloride part that comes from with the containing the carbonyl. So in the case of methyl ethanoate, it's most likely that the methyl group would come from an alcohol and the ethanoate group would come from either an ethanoic um, anhydride, ethanoic chloride, or possibly or possibly a carboxylic acid, depending on the, ma the way in which you've made the ester. When you're looking at amides, they'll have the carbonyl functional group with the carbon nitrogen. In this case, when the nitrogen's got two hydrogens on it, it's an amide. So if we've got two carbons in it, it'd be ethanamide, three carbons propanamide. Then we've got N-substituted amides, where one of the hydrogen has been replaced with an R group. So you've probably made N-phenylethanamide in the lab, where the phenyl group is attached to the nitrogen. There are four main reactions of acid chlorides that you can have a look at, but if you learn the main products from each one, it's fairly straightforward to use the nucleophilic addition elimination mechanisms to predict what you're going to make. So if we start with the acid chloride with water, that's going to make carboxylic acid. Acid chloride with alcohols make esters. Acid chlorides with ammonia make amides. And acid chlorides with amines make N-substituted amides. You will also get a byproduct of HCl. General mechanisms are shown here. So you've got your nucleophile uh, with the hydrogen shown on there. So the lone pair on the nucleophile attacks the electron deficient carbon, repelling the pi electrons in the carbonyl group onto the oxygen. So therefore you've got a lone pair on the oxygen and a negative charge. You'll then have the carbonyl group forming back again, the loss of the chloride and a deprotonation onto the nucleophile. So this is called nucleophilic addition elimination. If we have a look at some specific examples, you can see. So if I'm mixing ethanoyl chloride with water, it's the lone pair on the oxygen of the water molecule that attacks the electron deficient carbon. That causes repulsion of the electrons onto the oxygen, so you have an intermediate. The intermediate will have a negative charge on the oxygen and a positive charge on the lower oxygen. We're then using three curly arrows there to find the reaction going to completion and it's going to make a carboxylic acid and HCl. If we have a look at ethanoyl chloride with an alcohol, in this case methanol, it's the lone pair on the oxygen that attacks the electron deficient carbon. Reaction is the same mechanism yet again, but this time we will make an ester. So in this case we've got methyl ethanoate. This method is not actually in equilibrium compared to other ways of making esters, so the reaction can go to completion. As acid chlorides are very reactive, they can react in the cold. Remember that acid chlorides, however, are corrosive, as is HCl. So when you compare methods of esterification or making esters, you need to weigh up all the aspects. If we have a look at ethanoyl chloride with ammonia, it's the lone pair on the nitrogen is the nucleophile attacking the electron deficient carbon. Again, we get the intermediate, we get the deprotonation there onto the nitrogen, reforming of the carbonyl group and the chlorine becoming a chloride ion. So we end up with HCl and ethanamide and amide. If we look at ethanoyl chloride with ethylamine and amine, then you're going to get an N-substituted amide. So again, the mechanism is similar, resulting in finally N-ethyl ethanamide in this case. So what you need to learn on this one is that moving across the reaction, there's two curly arrows in the first stage, three curly arrows in the second stage, so a total of five curly arrows will be needed. When checking through, make sure that you know the nomenclature of the functional groups so you can name the compounds at the end, 
and have a think about what byproducts are. So using ethanoyl chloride, one of the byproducts is HCl. If we want to use ethanoic anhydride instead of ethanoyl chloride, then the byproduct is carboxylic acid.